Welcome back, fight fans. Welcome back. Welcome back. Let's just dig right into it. You know, I must have had hundreds and hundreds of requests for this particular video, so we're just going to get right into it. You know, Ken Duran and it's the prospect beat Errol Spence Jr. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people think this. If you have not seen Duran Ennis, go ahead and take a look at some of his highlights. But I just want to break down the fight, break down the fighters, and give you my thoughts on whether he can do that or not, whether this is a good fight for these guys. So let's just dig right into it. Errol Spence Jr. is 25 and 0 with 21 knockouts. Errol Spence Jr. is 29 years old. He's 5'9 and a half, and he has a 72 inch reach. His last victory came a unanimous decision against uh, Mikey Garcia. And ever since that particular victory, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk and speculation about Errol Spence Jr. facing Terrence Bud Crawford. Is Errol Spence Jr. a pound for pound best fighter in the world? Is Errol Spence Jr. unbeatable? Is he the best welterweight in the world? There's been a lot of questions surrounding how good Errol Spence Jr. is. Now, when I look at Errol Spence Jr. versus Mikey Garcia, uh, you know, I think it was a good win. Errol Spence Jr. showed that he could box that fight. Um, you know, that's not something that we typically seen from Errol Spence Jr. in any of his other fights. He typically brawled and ran over the guy, knocked over the guys. But in this particular fight he's seriously put on a boxing clinic so much respect to Errol Spence Jr. and credit for that but at the same time we have to be honest and unbiased about Errol Spence Jr. and he could not knock out a guy moving up two weight classes from 135 pounds so you know when people try to make him out to be this monster this boogeyman I just can't co-sign that because Errol Spence Jr. power is in question yes if he gets an accumulation of body shots against a lower level C-level opponent he will most likely stop him but against a top tier opponent against a guy that can throw shots back against a guy with decent defense against a guy who's just not in there to collect a check Errol Spence Jr. I just don't believe he's has that knockout power in him I mean you know I mean when you can't knock out a guy from 135 Let's just be honest and unbiased. But then let's take a look on the other end and let's look at Jerron Ennis. Jerron Ennis has 22 wins, no losses with 20 knockouts. So, you know, he appears to be a very strong puncher, similar to Errol Spence Jr. But let's take a look at him and his dimensions as well for this particular fight. Jerron Ennis himself is 21 years old Errol Spence Jr. on the reverse end when you look at his age he's 29 years old so Errol Spence Jr. is pretty much sitting on his prime and Jerron Ennis is basically just a young guy up and coming and you know when you look at Jerron Ennis's dimensions he's 5 foot 10 and he has a 74 inch reach so when you look at Jerron Ennis he has the height advantage over Errol Spence Jr. And a two-inch reach advantage over Errol Spence Jr. Not only does Jerron Ennis have a two-inch reach advantage over Errol Spence Jr., so does Terrence Bud Crawford. So I like to kind of break that down, too, because, you know, Errol Spence Jr., he's only at a disadvantage against two welterweights uh, with a, a reach advantage, and that's Jerron Ennis and that's Terrence Bud Crawford. So I think that's going to make a huge and big difference in how these guys go and approach this situation. Uh, but when I look at it um, right here, Jerron Ennis and I break down the fight I just don't see Ennis facing the level of competition that Errol Spence Jr. has faced even if Errol Spence Jr. has faced you know lower level fighters they're all above the guys that Jerron Ennis has been fighting um, even Mikey Garcia even though he moved up multiple weight classes he's still way better than anyone on Ennis's resume uh, a broken Kell Brook uh, you know a C-level Lamont Peterson these guys are still better than the guys that Jerron Ennis is fighting so at this point I have to favor and lean towards Errol Spence Jr to get the win i think jerron ennis but he's only 21 years old so it's a good fight to hype up because when you see the dimensions you see the potential the potential is there for ennis to be able to be a huge challenge for errol spence jr to be a huge problem for him to be able to overcome and to beat but the key to that fight and the key to any fight between ennis and errol spence jr simply has to be the fact that you know um it's going to come with experience and, you know, it's going to come with levels of competition. Jerron Ennis has to prove that he can beat C-level competition first, quality C-level competition. So, you know, we need to start seeing Jerron Ennis in there with, with live bodies, guys that's going to fight back. And then we can see if Jerron Ennis is this knockout power puncher, you know, because against tomato cans, anybody can get those guys out. But can you get out the, the, the C-level fighters? And once you prove that, move up to B-level fighters. And once you do that, then we can really rank you and see how good you truly are. But until he starts stepping up in competition, I don't think he's ready for Errol Spence Jr. because he's not ready for that massive of a jump. Now, I'm saying 
when I look at the dimensions and I see Errol Spence Jr. and Jerron Ennis, I look at these two guys and I see two guys that are extremely huge for the 147 pound divisions. So if you would look at Errol Spence Jr. as a white bully, you'd have to look at Jerron Ennis the same way. You know, I don't think either one of these guys have a long time to go in the welterweight division. I think both of these guys are massive. And I can see both guys moving up in weight, um, you know, once they get a lot, a lot of lot, a few more fights down. I see Jerron Ennis being able to hang around a lot longer because he's so young. But Errol Spence Jr. doesn't have that long to go. So while Jerron Ennis can hang around the welterweight division for much longer than Errol Spence Jr. can because of the weight, because of the age, you also have to look at it like this. The potential of this fight happening and getting made is not very likely any time in the future. Um, I, I would say, you know, maybe three or four years, you'll see this fight happen at a higher weight class. But as of right now in the welterweight division, you're not going to see this fight at all. I just don't think it's going to ever happen. But if it were to happen anytime soon, then I would think that next year, if Errol Spence Jr. is able to maintain his weight, then next year, um, mid to late next year, I think would be a good time for Ennis and Errol Spence Jr. after Jerron Ennis has passed a series of tests. Because I don't get sold on guys based on hype. You got to show me something in the ring. You got to show me you can be a quality level opponent and then you got to start moving up through the levels in those opponents so while i think ennis is a very talented prospect a very good prospect a young prospect and ennis is more well known and has accomplished more this early in his career than you know errol spence jr did at that point in his career but as of right now ennis is not ready for errol spence jr i just don't believe that that's the type of leap he can take but he does have the uh, physical dimensions and you know and he appears to be the type of fighter that would cause Errol Spence Jr. a lot of problems and in the future potentially defeat him. But as of right now, you can't give it to him. You have to give it to Spence. He's just too well, um, you know, he's too well far ahead of the game, much more proven than Ennis. But at the same time, Errol Spence Jr. should only be looking for one fight, and that's the fight against Terrence Bud Crawford because that's the fight that everyone wants to see. But once again, unbiased as always, it's the IBFP. Please share, like, and you must absolutely subscribe.